All right, everybody, welcome to Face Off. I'm your host, Jason Poligra. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe, hit your notifications tab, follow us on social media. We have a lot of fun stuff, including this show. You won't want to miss it. Let's get going. Summer camp films rock. They're just awesome. Something about them. It's like science or something. Anyways, we know of the big one, but there are many other camp films that rock as well. After Friday the 13th was released in 1980, other camp films jumped on board. In 1981, we saw the release of two, The Burning and Madman. Today on Face Off, we see which one was better. There's lots to go over, so let's get right down to it. Scary. The Burning starts with a horrifying sequence, a prank gone wrong. But other than some gory Savini effects, which are very welcome, the film fails to maintain a scary tone. In Mad Men, there isn't one shred of daylight from beginning to end. The film's suspense lays in the unknown. From the outset, when the story of Madman Mars is told at the campfire, an eerie feel was undeniable. Cheesy, but effective music, Mad Men actually chills. The explanation is laid down, let's go to the scoreboard. All right, the burning four, Mad Men eight. Sexy cast and content, let's bring it on. One of the strengths of The Burning is the cast. Several hot teens in their 20s, camp style nude scenes and sex scenes. This film exploited the fun side of youngsters at camp and it made the film better. Most notable is the nude scene by Caroline Houlihan, Holy Hot. Of note, Jason Alexander, Holly Hunter and Fisher Stevens all in this film. I have no idea what the casting objective was with Mad Men. From cheesy overblown theater style acting to old hag looks on the females, this film drops the ball on sex appeal in a messed up way. The sex symbol lead TP was about as sexy as a green egg. Even the film's big love scene was about five minutes of cheesy foreplay that involved slowly spinning around a hot tub with goofy smiles and horrid music. It needs to be stressed how bad a component of this film this category is. Oh. And with that, we go to the scoreboard. Kidding, there's nothing there. The Burning, eight, Madman, two. Ouch, can Madman bounce back? Onward and upward to filmmaking and characters. The Burning was a fun camp film, and the essence of that was captured. However, the execution and directing was weak. The main characters were endearing, likable, but the secondary characters kind of faded away. Some, like Jason Alexander's character, just disappeared. In the end, it's like they ran out of money, and the ending looks like it was cut and pasted and looped. It's a shame for a good film to fall apart like that in the end. Mad Men had character shortcomings as well, as I mentioned already, but that being said, the tone and pace of the film really held up. There were well-timed scares and moments of suspense, and if the characters were just a little bit more likable and relatable in some way, then maybe you'd almost give a crap if they died. Go to the filmmaking scoreboard. The Burning 7, Mad Men 7. On we go to plot. Ah, the classic tale of revenge. A caretaker burns to death after a prank, gets messed up, and seeks his revenge. Nothing too groundbreaking here. It works, don't get me wrong, but it's just nothing new. Madman was a pleasant surprise. Yes, it's a killer at camp, but the filmmakers made extra efforts in chronicling his disturbed past, where he went nuts, killed his family, as well as they created a cool, but kind of gimmicky effect if you say his name in the woods, he will come and kill you. Not sure why that's such a trigger, but I ain't a therapist. It was good for folklore. Hey, Mars! Madman Mars! Here we are! Come and get us, Madman! Let's go to the plot scoreboard. The Burning 5 and Madman 7. Making up some ground. Antagonist. Should be fun. Let's go to camp. Cropsy is the name of the weirdest burn victim I have ever seen in a horror film. Now, we love Tom Savini on this show, but his work on Cropsy was probably not his best work. Definitely not his most realistic for a burn victim. He was a bit goofy, and while his vengeance was strongly conveyed, in the end, he was a bit underwhelming. I liked him, but I really wanted to love him. 
Madman Mars was pretty badass. He just snapped one day. I mean, who can't relate to that? And he had a pretty cool look. He was a bit like a crazy uncle. Made funny sounds, which I personally loved, and was merciless. But somewhere in between going crazy on his family and when the film takes place, he appears to turn into some sort of half animal, which is weird. Off to the scoreboard, we I'm joking. There's nothing there, I swear. Off to the scoreboard. The Burning, five. Madman, seven. The Kills. All right, Savini makes up for the miss on the killer with some of his finest work, including an insane mass killing on a canoe where a whole whack load of kids get destroyed. From severed fingers to slashed heads and impalement, it was awesome. The other kills in the film were bloody and painful. It, just a whole whack load of awesomeness. Madman dropped the ball here. If there was one thing you could do to make up for severely unlikable characters and annoying cast is to kill them hard. Madman did not do that. Sadly, the kills were just as unappealing as the cast. And the scoreboard says, The Burning 8, Madman 4. All right, next up, setting. It's a camp, should be a wash, right? No. The Burning had a bright and cheery camp that was completely decimated by the doom of the killer. We all got that feeling that this was an awesome, fun, and real camp. It explored lake scenes, both skinny dipping and boating, shower creeps, a cafe, bedroom hijinks, and more. Dare I say, it even depicted camp better than the other big camp film. You know what I'm talking about. Get out of here, man. Madman did a great job of allowing the audience to feel the dark and isolation of camp at night. Where it lacked was, it was very one-dimensional. Clearly, low budget limited the filmmakers and it showed. Also, you could tell it was freezing when they shot this. I know it's the end of summer, but they aren't even trying to hide the fact that it's cold, sporting winter coats and breathing smoke. Come on. What camp would you like to go to? The Burning 7. Madman 5. All good things must end, and sadly, camp is no different. As I mentioned before, the ending of The Burning was sloppy. Technically and even story-wise, there was closure, but it seemed they didn't know what to do. Like someone stole the script on the last day and they had to improv, and they did it poorly. Madman's ending had several unveilings as well as a payoff that I think really benefited this little film. Very dark, grisly, and begged for a sequel, one I hear they are still trying to green light. All right, so let's go to the scoreboard for the endings. Burning 4, Madman 7. All right, let's see which camp film won by going to the final scoreboard. At the end, The Burning with a 48 and Madman with a 47. Very, very close. But the winner of Face Off is The Burning. So there you have it. Just remember, when you're in the woods, the hotter you are, the most likely you are to die and probably naked. That's all for this show of Face Off. Don't forget to subscribe below. Leave comments, hit notification tabs, find us on social media. We do a lot of fun stuff on there. And we'll see you soon on the next episode of Face Off.